I'm here with Timothy Hill, and first off, Timothy, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, of course, like you just said, my name is Timothy Hill. I, I am uh, currently serving the uh, third house district, which is uh, Sullivan, Carter, and Johnson counties. I'm a small business owner, uh, but the most important uh, titles that I hold um, are husband to my uh, beautiful bride, Charity, and, and father to my sons, Gavin and Hudson. Gavin, who is 18, and and uh, Hudson, who is four years old, otherwise known as the wild man. And so why have you decided to run for election? Well, you know, I've served in the Tennessee State House for eight years. We've been fortunate um, to, to uh, be in the State House and finish out as the chair of the Commerce Committee, um, and that's great. Um, but when Phil Rowe uh, and Congressman decided uh, to retire, uh, we were faced with a decision, and so my wife and I prayed about it. Um, we started to you know, kind of review some of the candidates that were in the field, and the question was, is, is this something that the Lord wants us to do and run? And then do we feel like, um, and do I feel like I can do as good or a better job than, than anybody that's running? And so, um, you know, my perspective is, is that we're, we're not really running against anyone. We're running for the office, and... Uh, so because of that, uh, we're very positive. We stay very focused on what our message is, which is that of being the proven conservative. And what I mean by that is there are people that abuse the word conservative because it's a very popular thing to say in a Republican primary, um, especially if, if you're looking to, to be the Republican nominee for the 1st Congressional District. But but the abuse of that word is is by people that have never had to take a vote. They don't know what it's like to, to stand up uh, and take a tough vote uh, when when uh, circumstances are hard. Um, so you don't really know what they're going to do, um, uh, although their rhetoric or their campaign materials may say one thing. But, you, you know, they have no track record. Or even worse, there's people that have a track record that they say they're conservative and, and they're just simply not. And... So we've got a tremendous opportunity to to be that proven conservative. And so uh, I'm looking forward, and, and the ultimate reason to run is to serve and to try to help people and to try to help the 1st Congressional District um, grow. Now, you kind of hinted toward it just now, but uh, what's the uh, specific reason you decided to run for election? Well, uh, again, we... <laughs> We were looking, I was looking as we were praying about it, considering it, looking at the field, and, and uh, there's a lot of good people running for office. But, but the question is, is can I do the best job for the 1st Congressional District? Um, and I believe that I can. And um, specifically in areas where we need to protect our manufacturing that's existing, we need to grow our manufacturing base um, in certain parts of the Congressional District we need to protect our communities. We need to protect our values. And, and ultimately what led me to the decision is, you know, Washington is beyond broken. I think we see that every day. Um, and our country is in moral decline. And I don't believe you can legislate morality, but I do believe that you can lead with heart. And I believe that you can lead in a conservative fashion that can be pro-business, uh, but also takes into effect our our good um, um uh, not just Tennessee values, but but really uh, East Tennessee values uh, of being pro-life, pro-Second Amendment. You know, we we want to take care of our neighbor. Uh, we want to take care of our families, and really, we don't. Uh, ultimately, we don't want government intrusion into that. And so, um, I'm looking forward to, to serving in that role. And what do you think is the biggest issue facing the country right now? Well, you know, there's two things. You know, overall, uh, we've got to get the message back that, that America is exceptional. And, um, you know, that that's, that is um, uh, unique to us. Our Constitution is unique. Our, our um, system of government is unique in the world. Um, that's something that we should be very much proud of. Um, but it's something that needs to be discussed and something that needs to be protected. I'm concerned about moral decline. You know, I, I, again, as a member of Congress, um, you know, the, the Congress isn't exactly thought very well of nationally, and that's because they're so out of touch with people. Um, but I'm, I'm honored to say and grateful to say that I'm a born-again believer. You know, I'm, I 
want to operate from the perspective and the worldview of a conservative Christian because of that's who I am. Um, and so we've got to be concerned about moral decline. And then um, the other thing, which is you know, more recent, um, is recovery. How do we as a country come out of all of the COVID-19 um, disaster um, and that's important to Northeast Tennessee and East Tennessee. That's important to uh, the whole state, the whole entire country. Because if we come out of it the way that, that we think that we can, uh, from a business standpoint, we're going to be in fine shape from a financial standpoint. But people's lives people's lives are, were ruined, are ruined. Uh, they've lost their jobs. They've lost their small businesses. They've lost their big businesses. And in some instances, instances government can be helpful but again, what we really need is we need to allow the market to, to recover and allow the market to take back off. Because that's, from a financial standpoint, that's the answer. The answer is not um, uh, unending uh, government bailouts because somebody's got to pay for that, right? Um, the answer is, is allowing the market to be unfettered and allowing the market to take off. And so those three things, from, from the uh, national perspective, weigh very heavy on my mind from a from a uh, first congressional district standpoint we we've got to uh, work on the recovery side of things but we've got to be sensitive to our communities and so if there's a way that the congressional office or the position of uh, of uh, uh, being in congress can build our community that's where i want to be and and i think all of those go hand in hand and narrowing it down, what do you think is the biggest issue Tennessee is facing? Well, I, I think right now, and of course, I'm I'm still in the uh, Tennessee State House, and I'm I chose um, uh, of note I chose to actually run um, for uh, the congressional seat. I am not running for state representative and for Congress at the same time um, uh, for a host of reasons. Uh, but we feel compelled and called to to run for. Uh, this congressional seat and give give our uh, complete time and energy into that. Um, but facing Tennessee as we're we're heading out of the legislative session uh, here in the next few days, um, you know recovery. You know when we we had an emergency session, did an emergency budget. Uh, we were sitting on a, uh, a tremendous uh, surplus and. With that tremendous surplus, you know, everybody's sitting around, okay, what are we going to do with all this extra money? We're going to put in the rainy day fund. You know, we're going to build build things or, you know, work on roads or wh whatever the decisions were going to be. By the time we come back in to two months later, we're at a billion-dollar shortfall. And and so, you know, it's a, a totally different, you know, it's a big swing. Um, and so because of that, the state has got to continue in its, its conservative fiscal management, which has been – generational um but but it has got to we've got to be concerned about the recovery aspect and that's that means support our communities some more support our businesses and small business owners and and i say small business uh, but as chair of the commerce committee i've encountered so many people uh, that are that are doing um, uh, business and you know there's no such thing as a small business to that business owner you know it's a big business to them and we've got to treat it as such. And that doesn't mean that the state or the federal government is, is all the answer. But in, if there's ways that we can be helpful, we need to be. And uh, that that's the challenge, I think, that is the big issue before the state of Tennessee. And what are your plans if you are elected? Well, so we're going to have a tremendous focus, and I'm going to have a tremendous focus on being with people. You know, I'm convinced that, that this congressional seat, it doesn't belong to a backroom deal or it doesn't belong to uh, uh, the, the individual that can spend the most money. It belongs to people. Uh, and so since that seat belongs to people, um, so will whoever the member of Congress is. I've always operated from the perspective that, you know, the seat is temporarily held by the occupant and... Uh, uh, I will owe people, not uh, not special interests, not the backroom deal, because there will be people that put me there. So um, being in that seat, operating from a Christian, conservative, and Republican worldview, uh, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do for individuals. You know, I'm, 
I'm convinced you can't represent what you don't know, and so we'll lean on people to tell us what their top priorities are, and we're going to work together where we can. Um, people find out with me on on the legislative side. You know, I'm pretty straightforward. It's going to be yes, no, I'm not sure, let me get back to you. Um, but my focus will be people and conservative policy. And before we go, is there anything else you'd like to say? Well, uh, you know, I appreciate the opportunity to, to join in and, and um, uh, talk about the race. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask people for their vote. If you have questions of me, feel free to call me on my cell phone directly. That number is 423-646-1589. Again, 646-1589. You know, I, I've had folks tell me, you know, I can't believe you're telling people your personal cell phone number. It goes back to the concept, you can't represent what you don't know. And so people need to feel comfortable enough with me to be able to call me, to be able to text me, and to know that you're going to get a response. And so, um, you know, as we go through the campaign, we've been sharing that cell phone number, and it's not going to change, and, and, and neither am I. And my conservative values, you know, the, uh, being the proven conservative in the race, is exa exactly that. For eight years, I've been consistent in uh, how I approach government, how I, I try to, to vote uh, from a perspective of limited government, uh, putting uh, constitutional values forward, uh, being pro-business, you can be all of the above, allowing the market to thrive, um, and just being with people and voting uh, for people's best interests. And we're looking forward to doing that at the congressional level. And so we, we ask, humbly ask people, uh, for their vote, and if they want to find out more about me, you can call myself, or you can go and check us out on Facebook, and we're also online at Timothy Hill for F O R Congress dot com, and we just have, have appreciated, I've appreciated getting to know folks um, uh, better, and we look forward to to serving. I want to thank Timothy Hill for joining us today.